All right, I want to do a study today on the subject of our Jews and Christians enemies. And we're going to go to the scriptures, King James Bible, and see what the scriptures have to say, not our opinions or church creeds or catechisms or whatever else. We're going to see what the Bible has to say about this. So we'll begin in Romans chapter 11, verse 25 through 28. Read those verses of Scripture. The Bible says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Let me stop right there. The new covenant has not come in. If you have a Bible version, a lot of the new versions that come from the Vatican, they will change New Testament to New Covenant. That's a very false and grievous error. The new covenant has not come in. The old covenant is still there. The covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But there's a new covenant coming when Jesus Christ, the true Messiah to the Jewish people, when he comes back, he establishes this new covenant and he takes away their sins. That happens at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. All right? Please understand that. I have a whole study on New Testament or T Testament versus covenant. Okay, the new covenant has not come in. Anybody's teaching that? They're false. All right? Or very ignorant. Um, but look at verse 28. Romans chapter 11, verse 28. As concerning the gospel, they, who's the they? Context, it's the Jews. They are enemies for your sakes your sakes, the Christians. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. All right, the Father's there. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is a special covenant there to those people, to the Jewish people that's there. It's all part of the end times prophecy. A lot of nuts out there try to teach this thing of replacement theology, that the church has replaced the nation of Israel. There are no Jews anymore. Um, well, then how could they be enemies you know, in terms of the gospel, how could they be our enemies? And how could the new covenant come in if there are no more Jews? Going to be doing a study here after this one. Uh, I have a number of sermons to do today, but I'll be doing a, another sermon on the thing of who are the real Jews. All right, we'll get into that. But you can see there, are we enemies? Are Jews and Christians enemies? Yes, we are. Okay, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. All right. There is a problem there. The Jews rejected their Messiah. They don't believe that Jesus is their Savior. Most of them don't believe that they are sinners in need of a Savior. They trust in their own self-righteousness. That's a big problem. Okay, Jesus Christ is the end of that self-righteous pride that you have to the Jew first and also to the Greek. All right, um, I'm a Gentile. I am not Jewish. So, you know, people say, well, you have a Jewish Savior. You have a Jewish, you're part of a Jewish religion or whatever. Well, in, in essence, yes, Jesus Christ came as a Jew, came to his own and his own received him not. He came, I'm not sheep, sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is true. The disciples were Jewish. The early Christians, many of them were Jewish. But then you also have Gentiles being saved as well. Um, and that's where I get in. Okay. Uh, you say, well, why don't you find some religion that, that uh, lines up with your own people, your own Northern European people? Because those are false. And ironically, a lot of the uh, heathen pagan type of stuff, if you study it, which I have, I've done detailed studies, put out detailed studies um, on it, uh, showing uh, verses or uh, things from the Havamal and some of the other Nordic writings and things. Um, that stuff was actually written um, just a thousand years or so ago by Snorri Sturluson was one of them, who was a converted from paganism to a Roman Catholic. So uh, the ancient... Uh, pagan things of the northern heathen peoples um, actually are just very recently written by a Roman Catholic. Kind of an issue there. Well, oh, but we have our ancient Wiccan pagan heathen. Uh, no, you don't have anything ancient in terms of an ancient text. You have um, hearsay and conjecture. A lot of, uh, well, I heard an oral tradition and whatever else, but uh, that doesn't equal ancient texts. This Bible, this King James Bible is based on ancient texts 
texts, ancient Greek manuscripts. There are over, I think, 6,000 some extant Greek manuscripts. Extant meaning in museums. It's not just, oh, we believe. Uh, no, they're actually there. They've been looked at by scholars. They're in a museum someplace. Okay, thousands of New Testament manuscripts. And you have the, you know, the Hebrew, Masoretic Hebrew of the Old Testament also been preserved. So we have manuscripts that are thousands of years old. Um, Norse pagans don't have that. Okay. So um, it's not that I'm half having to convert to being a Jew. Okay, I don't. I can maintain my Gentile ways and my Gentile um, characteristics and whatever else, my diet, my culture and everything, as long as it conforms to the scriptures. Okay, and I've talked about that in many studies. Again, please understand, if you're just watching this and you're saying, oh, this guy's got opinions and whatever, I do have opinions based on years of preaching, years of research. You can find all of the uh, very detailed sermons on my channel here. I don't just come up with opinions just be, you know, based on preferences or something. I look at facts. I read a lot. All right. Um, Philippians chapter 3. Let's go there next. Are the Jews our enemies as far as being, they're not Christians. And I'll tell you right now, I have to just confess to something. I was very much asleep to a lot of just how bad some of these Jews, you know, I just kind of thought of the first century Pharisees they are, you know, hunting Christians down all the time. But then I, I just kind of thought, well, that's back then. You know, that's not today. Oh, no, there's these rabbis. They're still crazy. The, all their Noahide laws and things. Watch my studies again, showing their proof, the proof from their system. Uh, they want to force us not to be able to name the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, some of these Jews out there, some of these rabbis and things. The rabbis were the ones that turned the Jews of the first century against Jesus Christ. Okay, one minute they're singing Hosanna to the son of David, you know, and, and um, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You know, they realize Jesus is fulfilling prophecy here. He is our Messiah. And the next, the rabbis are turning their hearts and they're yelling, crucify him, crucify him. Lest they should be kicked out of the synagogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rabbis have some serious problems, especially because Jesus Christ was the final rabbi. I have a whole study on that, showing it, proving it from the scriptures and from other writings and things too. Philippians chapter 3, we'll read verse 17, down through verse 21. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Who is Paul talking about? Let's continue. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Read the context. It's talking about the Jews. Okay. Um, they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. That, that's the Jews in the context there. The Jews that reject Jesus Christ, they are enemies to us. Uh, enemies to the gospel. Enemies to the cross of Jesus Christ. And it says there, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. That is a perfect description of the average Jew right now. Um, their God is their belly. They think about satisfying themselves. Whatever it takes to make money, whatever it takes to get rich. That's what they believe. Glory is in their shame. All the perversion in Hollywood and everything else. I mean, there are Jewish rabbis standing up and saying, yeah, we're behind all of this stuff. They don't even cover it up. They literally glory in their shame. Oh, look what we're doing. We're destroying the morality of the Gentiles out there, the goyim. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> they glory in that. Who mind earthly things. Yeah. Um, what does the average Jew think right now? The average Jew believes that they are bringing in the kingdom. There is no, you know, when the Messiah comes, when the Mashiach comes, as they call him, um, they believe he's going to be a man, just a regular mortal man. He's not God manifest in the flesh. So, hey, you know, he can't really judge any of us because he's just like us. He's a sinner like us. Well, he'll be a great teacher and whatever else, a great rabbi, but uh, he isn't any different than we are. And so we don't have to go back to Israel 
as you know, it is the land of promise, we don't have to go back there because we're going to take over all countries. Everything will eventually be under our control. All economies, all the oil, all the timber out here. I guess eventually they'll take this from me, they think. Um, they couldn't be more wrong. Um, but this is my property here that I'm standing on. And they think that they can eventually take this from me. Force me into a compact city and I'll just be in there in my little, you know, golden cage or whatever, little, you know, cubicle or something like that. Um, no, I'm a wild man. You're not going to get me off my land. Okay, that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Go next to James chapter 3. Actually, we'll go to James chapter 1. I want to show you something very interesting here. If you're newly saved, new, new to the Bible, I have a lot of variety of people that watch me. So some of you are very well versed in the scriptures. You've been saved for a very long time. Um, had some really good preaching and teaching you know, taught to you. Some of you have been with me for, for many years. You've seen a lot of the teaching and things that I've brought out. Um, very well versed in the scriptures. Some of you are seminary, seminary educated um, Bible college educated, whatever else, you know, a lot of things, but uh, some of you are just brand new. So that's why we're here. James chapter one, verse one, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, grading. Who is the book of James written to? It's written to the Jews. Okay. Um, again, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Oh, the Jesuits came up with dispensationalism. No, they didn't. Okay, if some Jesuit wrote about dispensationalism at some point in time, that doesn't mean that they came up with it. All right, <laughs> um, figure that out. Okay, uh, there's right division. Uh, why would a book be, some books are written to Gentile Christians, others are written like this one here, the book of James, to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. But yet I thought that over in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, it says there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Hmm then why would there be a book written to Jews in a future context? Maybe because there's a point in time when the catching up of the body of Christ happens, both Jews and Gentiles that are saved go up, and God starts to deal with the nation of Israel again. Huh. Yeah. When the new covenant comes in at the end of this time, the time of Jacob's trouble. Understand things uh, dispensationally. You have to rightly divide the scriptures. And a lot of people out there, they're too lazy to do that. They just say, the whole thing is mine. Genesis to Revelation, it's all written to a Christian. Well, then you have a lot of problems, <laughs> a whole lot of problems. And you have to make things symbolic and just, you know, not to be taken literal and the whole thing. Um, that's a problem. Uh, no, James, the book of James is written to Jews, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Wind's blowing my notes here. Give me one minute, please. Okay, so let's go to James chapter 3 now. James chapter 3, and remember this book is written to the Jews, the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, beginning in verse 10. James 3, verse 10, down through verse 18. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Had somebody write a comment and say, give me one verse of scripture where it says we shouldn't be using profanity. Okay, right there's one of them. <laughs> and that's it's a truth for anybody in any dispensation, by the way, too. Again, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable for doctrine. That's the one you have to be careful about because there are certain doctrines which are not pointed at you because you're in a different dispensation. But doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. That's the fourfold purpose of scripture. So right here, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, you shouldn't be using profanity. For any reason, and if you're saved, why would you want to use profanity? It's the lowest form of the English language or whatever other language that you're speaking in. If there's profanity, profane words, it means you have a low IQ. Okay, verse 11. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? Hmm, remember that. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his word works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly. Remember what we read earlier about the Jews, that they're earthly. They mind earthly things. Sensual, devilish. 
For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Are the Jews known for making peace? <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not. Um, hmm. Maybe there's some things being written here in the book of James that uh, have a future fulfillment. You know, when there's a new covenant that comes in where their sins are taken away. Hmm. And uh, who might bring in that peace, do you think? You have any ideas? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the uh, Prince of Peace? The Lord Jesus Christ? But I want you to notice a couple things there. First and foremost, James is written to the 12 tribes. James chapter 1, verse 1. We talked about that. Um, Jewish media has popularized profanity through Hollywood. And they have. Okay, out of the same mouth proceed bless, proceedeth blessing and cursing. Is that true of the Jews today? Uh-huh. The filthy Hollywood people? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, blessing and cursing coming out of their mouths. Pretty disgusting. Um, the fig tree in verse 12 compares to Matthew chapter 24, verse 32. Learn a parable of the fig tree when it's, you know, branches yet tender and it's, it brings forth leaves and things. You know that summer is nigh. All right. Um, in a few months from now, you can see maybe some here a little bit way back in there. It's starting to change. Some of the leaves are starting to change color. Why? Well, because we're in early autumn. And before long, the maple trees are going to be yellow. Well, the sugar maple ones will be yellow and the, the red maple will be red. There are a lot of them are already changed to red. And the aspen will be yellow and, you know, a lot of the different trees will be changing. And then the leaves will come off and it'll be winter, time for winter. And then we'll have to wait for, around here it's about six months of winter, and uh, here in northern Maine. And then springtime comes and you start to see the trees bringing forth and having leaves again come on them. Well, uh, Israel was in a long uh, time of winter. And then Israel became reborn as a nation. And uh, some really uh, satanic people did it. Um, but the Bible doesn't say that God's going to bring Israel back as a nation through a very righteous, holy people. He doesn't say that. God brings the Jews back to their land. And right now the Jews are dispersed. The diaspora and everything else, they're in other countries. And right now they don't want to go back. I know that there's some a statistic, I think it's over 235% or something, um, you know, percent of the Jews in Israel have been leaving um, and uh, they're going into other countries. God's going to do something to get them back to the land of Israel. Why? Because the Bible says so. That's why. All right. Another point here. Um, the Jews have bitter envying compared to jealousy in Romans chapter 11, verse 11. Yeah. There's, um, you know, we are saved. We are born again. I'm part of the body of Jesus Christ spiritually connected to him and I have promises and things like that that are given to me and and um, eternal security uh, again all proven dispensationally um, in the time of Jacob's trouble that's not going to be there it's going to be changed again I've done all the doctrinal studies to prove it you can write in the comments you don't know what you're talking about no you don't know what you're talking about because you aren't going and studying my other videos okay where I actually go through the scriptures and I have no time to argue with people in the comments section that gets really annoying. Give me one verse of scripture. Give me this. Give me that. Uh, watch my studies. If you want the truth, you'll find the truth on this channel. If you don't want the truth, then me wasting my time arguing with you isn't going to accomplish anything. But the Jews are provoked to jealousy, which leads to bitter envying. All right. Right now, as a people, they're cut off. Um, they're not saved. They, When a Jew dies today, they go to hell. Um, the only way that they can go to heaven when they die is if they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's none other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Acts chapter 4 talks about that. Peter, a Jew, speaking to the Jewish you know, leadership, the different rabbis and things. Um, <clears throat> you have to be saved through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to the Father, period. Okay, You die without him, I don't care, or chosen people, whatever, it doesn't matter. You go to hell, all right? Um, and that leads to bitter envying. And they have to try to build the kingdom and, and fake God's blessing in their life 
through their artificial systems of debt and whatever else, else uh, wealth creation and things like that through all the bank scheming and the Federal Reserve stuff and uh, all the stuff that they get themselves involved in and bring God's wrath upon them to the uttermost. Very sad, very unfortunate for them. Um, another point I want to make is that the Jewish Antichrist Messiah is from the earth. It says, verse 15, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. How about a uh, Mashiach that they are expecting, and you actually study who this guy is, it's the Antichrist of Scripture. He is the one that comes and he promises peace and he does all these other things, obtains the kingdom by flatteries. Um, he is the this man that's coming, that's going to show up on the earth. Hmm, very interesting. And the interesting thing about it is, if you read Revelation chapter 13, it actually goes on to say that the devil gives him his seat and power and great authority. And they, the Jews, the Jewish rabbis literally teach right now, according to Talmudic tradition and whatever, that this, this uh, Mashiach that's coming, the Messiah that's coming, he is just a mortal man. He is not divine. He is not supernatural. And what they're describing is the Antichrist, literally. Pretty unfortunate for them. But the real truth of it is that Jesus Christ is the real Messiah and he is from heaven and brings real peace and knowledge to the earth when he comes. And there's a whole lot of studies I've done to prove that. Again, you have the whole thing of Jeconiah being cut off and then he's called Kaniah and nobody from his bloodline can ever become the Messiah. Well, then how does that work? Well, you would have to be able to prove descendancy back to him through the seed of a woman and adoption through a man, which is exactly what Jesus Christ did. Again, I have a whole study on that, answering a Jewish rabbi's objections to Jesus. Years ago, I mean, this stuff has been out there for years. And you know, you can say, oh, Denlinger's an idiot and whatever else and things, you can reject what I say, but you know what? It's not me, it's the truth. It's the scriptures. I am not the authority. The Bible is the authority. And you will become accountable at some point in time um, God's not going to hold, hold you accountable. You know, Paul writes about, I obtained mercy. You know, he was a blasphemer and, and everything else. And he said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. All right. But there was a certain time if Paul would have gone past that time frame of just continuing to persecute Christians, he's no longer ignorant. All right. Um, you can do it up to a certain point in time. But then God starts to say, okay, there's been enough information out there you really need to understand this stuff. And a lot of these Jewish rabbis out there, they will hunt down Christian channels and try to debunk them. They're not ignorant. They're not ignorant at all. Get this branch out of the way. It keeps poking me in the hand. But let's continue here. Uh, go to John chapter 16. The book of John chapter 16. And I had a, a uh, somebody professing Jew. I don't know whether they were a real one or not, but they said that what I was teaching was anti-Semitic. Um, how could it be? I'm reading to you from a New Testament written by Jews and a Jewish Savior. How's that anti-Semitic? Well, you're saying the Jews are sinners. Uh, well, the Bible says that all have sinned. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> John chapter 16, verse 31 through verse 33. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Um, there will be tribulation for the Jewish people. The time of Jacob's trouble, the real title. It's never actually called the Great Tribulation or the Tribulation as a title. It's merely a description. That time period that's coming for the Jews, the book of Revelation and Daniel, the two tie together and explain all the events. You can get you know, a pretty interesting study if you study both books. And that time period is for the Jews. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, it says in Daniel. Um, and Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, I think it is, it talks about the, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. So, 
there is coming a bad time, and it's to correct the Jewish people. Why? Because they are enemies right now, according to the gospel. Remember that. Philippians chapter 4. <clears throat> right now, a lot of the Jews over there in Israel, you know what they're saying? We just like to have uh, peace. We don't want this war in Gaza. We don't want the fighting and all the people in the world just hating us and despising us. Well, I really hate to tell you, but it's just going to get worse. And worse for the unsaved Jewish people. There's only one way for you to have peace as a Jew. Only one way. Let me show it to you. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Not the hope of Israel, the Messiah that's coming and, you know, no, the hope of of Israel is Christ Jesus, the peace that passeth understanding. Verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. How do you like those key words? True, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praise. Eight different things there. How much of that is there in Israel right now? Pretty wicked place over there, from what I've heard. I have no desire to ever go over there. I don't need to. I, meet Je I met Jesus Christ years ago right here in America. You can meet him right where you're at today. There's no holy shrine that you have to go to or holy city or whatever and go crawl on your knees and up to kiss an idol or something or whatever. No. You can meet the God who created everything. You can meet him where you're at. But uh, Israel, true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and praise. I don't think there's a whole lot of that right now. So the question comes up, are there any real Jews left? Go to Romans chapter 2. If somebody hasn't already typed it in the comments, they probably are getting ready to, and they're thinking, I'll just get through this because I know he won't bring up Romans chapter 2. He says that, the, that there are still Jews out there, but I can prove that they're not there. <laughs> Romans chapter 2. I, I've dealt with people for so many years, heretics and things, online, offline. I've been saved a long time, and I've been in ministry a long time, and been in a lot of fights spiritually and things. Almost a few fights physically, too. Um, Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. See, right there we prove that there are no Jews. The people in Israel, they aren't real Jews. It's just, you know, it's spiritual. We're just spiritual Jews. Well, um, it is talking about spiritual Jews. It's talking about in, in terms of receiving that spirit of adoption, all right, and having a promise of the millennial kingdom, a part in the millennial kingdom, if you suffer with Jesus Christ. But does that mean that God, God got rid of the Jews and no longer recognizes the Jews? Is that what it's saying there? You say, yes. Oh, uh, well, you need to keep reading. Okay, replacement theology teachers, um, they count on you being very stupid, and they count on you not having a Bible and not reading your Bible very much, okay? How do you know? Go to chapter 3, okay? I may, I may slow down here a little bit for the, some of the people out there. Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. After that comes Romans chapter 3. Can we say it, class? 3 comes after 2. All right, I, I'm not there in person, so I can't give you a little gold star on your worksheet or whatever. You know, pat you on the back and give you a special little, you know, I can't do that. But, you know, one, two, three, okay? <laughs> Romans chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? 
or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Um, yes, there is a difference between Jew and Gentile. There is an advantage to the Jews. Okay, this book is about them and their ancestry. This isn't my book in terms of um, then, you know, the ancient great, great, great ancestor of, of Brian Denlinger up in, you know, the northern realms of Europe, you know, the ancient Germania or whatever, or the barbaric realms and things. Um, he did this on a certain day and he praised God. And no, it's not about my ancestry. Okay. I'm born in with a spirit of adoption, but that doesn't mean I've replaced Israel. And you get these nuts. There's a bunch of you out there in the comments and you're a nut. You're very ignorant of scripture as well. But uh, this whole thing of, well, the ancient barbaric peoples, see the New Testament, they, the Jews, they went up into Europe and then they came over and uh, went into, you know, from Europe to North America. And that's, and we're the Jews now, the white Europeans are the Jews. That's stupid. Okay. And again, I've debunked it. It's been debunked for years. You're just so lazy, you don't actually go through all the different studies that I've done and see how I've debunked it years ago. And you go, well, what's the study? What's the name of the study? Go search it for yourself, okay? You want, to, you want me to tie your shoes to? Maybe, you know, come over and flip your Bible pages for you? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no nice way for me to do this, okay? I just have to be insulting. But let's continue. Romans chapter 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? See, they were playing word games with Paul back then too, by the way. Let me just add that. Just like they play word games with me and they try to catch you in your words and everything else. Verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have proved before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Yes, you have a special blessing upon you if you're a Jew. If you can trace your ancestry back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you have a special blessing. God has not cast you away. God has not put you away. If you're a lost Jew, you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, then we're enemies at this point in time. I'd like to see you get saved, though. I'd like you to see you study the scriptures, search the scriptures, read it for yourself. Understand that the New Testament is a Jewish book, just like the Old Testament is a Jewish book. I serve a Jewish Savior. Okay, as I've said before, I don't have any Jewish blood in me, but I have Jewish blood on me. Uh, washed away my sins. I'm not anti-Jewish. Okay, I'm against the sins of the Jewish people. The horrible things that you've gotten involved in as, as Jewish people. Just kind of like a lot of the things that my American government has done. Some pretty horrible things. But look at verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible condemns everybody. It's not an anti-Semitic book. This book is against man. But it gives a solution. God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I don't believe that Jesus is God. Well, watch my studies, okay? I'm not going to argue with you in the comments. Watch my studies, all right? And you say, well, I don't need to. I don't want to hear anything else. Well, then you'll no more be admonished. Um, you've closed your mind off. Well, goodbye. Can't help you. Galatians chapter 3. We'll go there. I've quoted that different times here, but we'll go and we'll actually look at it. I know, I mean, again, this study is not about replacement theology. I have multiple studies on that. But I know the arguments. I've been in the arguments. I've, I've fought these guys and argued with them back and forth. And I know where they go to. I know the scriptures that these different heretics go to. Um, I've been a full-time preacher now since 2007. Okay, went into ministry full-time. Left a, um, you know, being self-employed 
a wood turning artist. Work was being sold in different galleries and, and things around the country, some very high end galleries, I might add. And the meeting very wealthy people, um, you know, had a curator of, of a museum call me the one time talking to me about one of my pieces and that they wanted to have it on a display and whatever else. And, um, you know, I was a well respected artist. And the Lord called me into the ministry. And, you know, I was trying very hard to just be part of some Baptist church someplace or whatever and just kind of give my time to some preacher. But I couldn't find any preachers that were willing to talk about all aspects of the truth. And it was, okay, Lord, where do I go now? And the Lord put his hand down from heaven and he said, how about uh, you go into ministry? Me? <laughs> In ministry? Are you kidding me? You realize how bad of an idea that is? And the Lord said, uh, pretty bad one, yeah. Try it. Here I am, all these years later. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay, see, the Jews are done. Well, then the Greeks would be done too, wouldn't they? Okay, think about it. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. It's just talking about the Lord not being a respecter of persons. That's all that's going on there. doesn't mean that there's, a difference, there's no difference between Jews and Greeks. There is. Okay, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I belong to Jesus Christ. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. That's an old hymn, if you don't know. Okay, so that's how it works. Finally, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'll show you one more place here to go to. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. The Bible says here, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. In order for you to have truth revealed to you, you have to believe what God wrote. You say, well, I believe that this is a good translation, but it's not perfect. Uh, I'll call it God's word, but I don't believe it's perfect. Well, then you have a rather weird God. Either he can't inspire a book or you're smarter than him. If you call this book God's word, but then you can point out errors in it. It's a bit of a problem. Not very logical. Okay. Uh, if you want this book to work in your life, then you need to believe it. Verse 14. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both kill, kill the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Very true of the modern Christ-rejecting Jews of, of today. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Uh, who's the book of Revelation for? The revelation of Jesus Christ. The church doesn't need to have Jesus Christ revealed to it. The nation of Israel needs to have the have Jesus Christ revealed to them. The Jews require a sign. But there's so many scriptures I can go over to prove what I'm saying. And some of you are so lost and in your sin and wicked that you can't accept it. And you'll fight and fight and fight in the comments. You just, oh, I don't agree. I, I just can't agree. You need to get saved. You need to have your foolish pride be broken and admit that you're wrong. And what I'm saying is, positive. It's extremely positive. Okay, first and foremost, I don't have to agree. I, I love the Jewish people, just like I love other lost people, people, excuse me. And I can say, I realize that there's a special future there to those Jewish people. I can see it and I can have love for them. But I still have to acknowledge the fact that according to the scriptures, according to my New Testament, they are my enemy right now. Okay. So it's not that I just have to be a Jew worshiper, although I do worship Jesus Christ, so technically I am a Jew worshiper. But I don't have to agree with everything that the Jews are doing. I'm not going to condemn all people under the title Jew um, because there's some that are evil. There's a lot that are evil. I'm not going to do that. 
but I'm also going to look and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm going to condemn certain sins and Jesus Christ will protect me. He will preserve me. I don't have to worry about them coming after me and hurting me and whatever else. I'm not even thinking about that. That's one positive thing. Another positive thing, being a dispensational preacher, I can look and I can say, okay, who is the book of James written to? Twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Okay, am I part of the twelve tribes? No, I'm not. I'm part of the body of Christ. I'm born in with the spirit of adoption. But I don't have to have Jesus Christ revealed to me. They do. I don't have to go back to the land of Israel. And if I was a real Jew, I would have to. Okay, because being a real Jew is connected to land. There's a land of promise for the Jewish people. See? So I can just stay right where I'm at. Do the work of the Lord. And when he says, okay, the church age is over, come up hither. I leave. And then God's wrath and judgment comes upon the Jewish people. And they get to see seven years, if they make it that long, of signs and wonders to confirm the book of Revelation. It's a wonderful thing that I'm trying to preach to you. Well, I, I don't think so. I think I have to go through the Great Tribulation. <laughs> okay. All right. If your faith is so small that you actually have to have your sight, you know, believe by sight, you have to see the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast and, you know, be out running around. Well, you know, you could probably come here during that time because I won't be here to, you know, get rid of you because you're trespassing on my land. So, you know, head to northern Maine. It's a pretty good thing, except for in the winter. Well, and except in the summertime when there's all the bugs. You know, right now it's not bad because the bugs aren't really there. So, you know, come in the fall, you know, and early spring. Other than that, it's kind of rough. Well, it does get kind of cold here at night, though. So, you know, <laughs> but you know, you're know, you convinced you have to go through that time period to really have your faith strong, you know, and, and endure to the end to show how good you are and whatever else. Um, but you're convinced. Oh, okay. All right. You know, your beliefs came from Jesuits. Nobody believed it before the 1800s. And well, I've proved all that other stuff. I've shown it in my studies, but you don't have enough time, you know, between your video game playing and your porn viewing and your whatever else you do, you know, lost people out there. Um, you don't have much time to actually study the scriptures or the people that, uh, the time will come when they will not endorse sound doctrine. You know, you like, I mean, I, it, it amazes me. I'm actually seeing people saying that uh, my walk and talks that I do, that's a sermon. That's a really good sermon. Those aren't sermons, okay? This is a sermon where I have a Bible in my hand and I'm saying, turn here, turn there, look at the Bible, look at the scriptures. Those are sermons. I do them out here, outdoors, and I do them in my office, in my studio. That's a sermon, okay? Me walking and randomly giving you my thoughts and reading two verses of scripture or something, that's not a sermon, all right? So, um, but that's where I'm going to end this study. I have three more to do here. So I'm going to move my camera. The lighting's not the best right here. So, but I do hope that you take some time to read and to study and whatever else. Um, I studied, I got saved when I was 26 and, um, I studied for, oh boy, uh, that would have been 2001 when I got saved. Uh, and I studied right up until I was, uh, well, 2007 before I made my very first DVD. And, um, you know, I'd gone to different churches and Baptist churches and things. And I was, I mean, I, I didn't even have a job at that time. I was just, I mean, other than tree work and wood turning. Um, but I was spending a lot of my time studying the scriptures, years of studying and researching and reading and there were very few preachers back then that were just bringing out the truth, just plain, here you go. And, um, you know, I spent literally thousands of dollars uh, buying books, audio, you know, cassette tapes back in those days. Um, and they were just starting to come out with MP3s and, and whatever. Um, and VHS tapes, which later became DVD tapes and, or DVDs, excuse me, not tapes. And I spent a lot of money. You can study under this ministry here for free. And you can study other guys as well out there. Those that hold to the King James Bible. Somebody uses a new version. The Holy Spirit's not, you know, speaking to them at all. That There's new versions are satanic. They're wicked. Um, which I've, I've proven. That's not just a, a radical opinion or whatever else. No, they're not based on the received text. They're based on a minority 
text, which, which is, you know, based on a forgery for the Sinaiticus, and then you get the one from the Vaticanus, you know, or Vaticanus that comes from the Roman Catholic Church. Good place to find your Bible. Uh, I don't think so. Um, but I've done a lot of research, a lot of studies, and you can watch everything for free. If you've been blessed by the ministry, then Lord puts it on your heart. Send a donation to the ministry. We always appreciate that. Thank you to everybody out there that supports the ministry. You say, well, I don't feel called to do it. Okay, then watch all the videos and um, at least learn the scriptures. You can do that for free. I didn't have that opportunity, but I'm giving it to you. So that will be it. And uh, see you in the next study. Thank you very much for watching.